In this video, we're going to talk about the order of filters. We're going to explore what is the default position of the filter within the filter chain, multiple ways to change the order of the filter, what are the value types we can use to set the order, and what happens if two filters have exact same order value. Before we start, I would like to point out that I don't have Spring security within this application to simplify our example. However, any knowledge you will obtain within this tutorial will be directly applicable to Spring filters as they use exact same rules of ordering. Let's dive into it. If you haven't followed previous tutorials, I just want to quickly recap that everything that we have within this application is a headers login filter class, also our main class, and a controller with one endpoint. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to open application filter chain and set a breakpoint where we can see all the filters within our application. What is the application filter chain? It's the filter chain provided by Tomcat out of the box. If you want to follow along, just open application filter chain class and find the line 167, set a breakpoint over there. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to open my terminal and issue HTTP GET request to my endpoint. Oh, I forgot to run my application. So I run my application in debug mode and now I'm going to send HTTP request which triggered my breakpoint. If I'm going to filters array here and expand it, we can see there are actually multiple filters stored within this filter chain. Some of these filters are coming from Spring, like character encoding filter, while others coming from Tomcat, like Tomcat WebSocket filter. We can also see that almost at the bottom of the filter chain, we have our headers login filter. And here will be my first takeaway. Every filter that doesn't have order explicitly specified will be placed at the bottom of the filter chain. Let me show you. If I go back, if I stop my application first, and then go back to my headers login filter and use the order annotation to set the order of the lowest precedence, we can see that this value is grayed out, meaning it's redundant because the order of the filter is already set as the lowest precedence. Don't worry about the order annotation yet. I will explain later in more details, multiple ways, how to set the order of the filter. But for now, you probably have a question. Uh, if I go back to my application filter chain and send the request again, we can see that the headers login filter is not the last filter that we have. So the last filter is actually a Tomcat WebSocket filter. Why is that? The truth is, is that WebSocket filter is responsible for upgrading traditional short-lived HTTP connection to a full duplex real-time connection between client and server. Because of that reason, we need to make sure that all HTTP filters executed beforehand. If we place a WebSocket connection before other HTTP filters, especially very important ones like authorization and authentication, those may simply not be executed because the connection has already been upgraded, therefore breaking the very important part of the application. So in other words, you can think of the WebSocket filter as a system filter that will be always placed at the bottom of the filter chain. So with that in mind, when we're talking about the lowest precedence within the filters, we will always assume that we're only taking into account HTTP filters. Now, since we got this WebSocket business out of the way, let me show you multiple ways how to change the order of the filters. In order to change the order of the filter, we can use one of three things. First, we can use order annotation this is one of the easiest, least verbose, and quickest methods to do so, although it does have its own downsides, which we'll explore in a second. A second option, we can implement ordered interface, and a third option, we can use filter registration bin for a fine-tuned configuration. Let's talk about order annotation first. We already used it, and it is simple as that. We just put it on top of the, our filter class and specify the value. We will talk about the values in a moment, but for now, to make sure this annotation works, I will change lowest precedence to a highest precedence, which will put our filter to the top of the chain. So let me do that. I will go and type highest precedence, 
and I will run my application and I will open my terminal. I will send HTTP request, inspect the filter chain, and we can see that indeed our headers login filter was placed to the top. Now I'm going to stop the application and go back to my headers login filter to talk about one downside that we have with order annotation. And the downside is that our highest precedence value right now is hard-coded, meaning we can't control the order of the filter programmatically. For example, if we have multiple filters within the application and one needs to be placed before the other or some other logic that controls the position of the filters, we can't do this with order annotation. So this is where we can use order interface which will help us achieve exactly that. For the purpose of this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my custom header using another filter. And we need to make sure that this filter is placed before the login filter to make sure that all the headers are logged. If my custom header will be placed after the login filter, then uh, the logic is not going to work properly because <laughs> it's not going to log our uh, custom filter. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to set the order of the login filter to zero, and then I will add another filter called my custom header filter. And I will extend once per request filter. I will annotate this as the component and I will implement our do filter internal method. Then I'm going to copy the implementation for um, the logic that will insert my custom header. Please don't worry, uh, that's quite a lot of code to just add a header using filter, but I wanna pay our attention to just uh, ordering as this is something that we're trying to focus on in this uh, lecture. I'll go into a set override right here and I'm going to implement ordered interface or ordered. Um, so ordered interface has only one method get order and this will specify the order of our filter. For the simplicity of my first run I'm just going to set the order minus one which will place our custom header filter before the login filter. If I'm going to run uh, my application and I'm going to send a request we can see that the custom header login filter was placed before the headers login filter. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to implement some custom logic that will dynamically control the position of my custom header filter. I'm going to navigate to my custom header filter and I will say that if headers login filter exists, then I want to place it before the headers login filter. Otherwise, I want to give it lowest precedence. In order to check whether the filters exist, I'm going to use application context. I'm going to use Lombok to uh, make sure we have uh, required args constructor. I will use private final application context and I will check if application context contains being headers login filter, then I'm going to return minus one. Otherwise, I'm going to return lowest precedence. So let me run my application one more time to make sure it works. I will execute uh, my logic right here and see that my custom header filter indeed was placed before headers login filter. And if I stop my application and I will remove the component annotation on top of the headers login filter, which will make Spring to ignore this filter, it basically wouldn't be placed in the filter chain. And let me run my application again. I'll run it again. We can see that um, my custom header filter was placed at the bottom of the filter chain. Okay, now we'll look at the order interface and explore that it allows us to dynamically control the order of the filter. However, we still have one problem. The problem is my custom header filter does too many things. So it adds a custom header and it also determines its position. Let's say if we're building a library where our filter can be used by multiple applications, which can have a variety of filters and different logic about the position of this filter, we need to somehow externalize our uh, configuration of the filter so that the application can control its position and not the filter itself. 
So this is where the filter registration bin comes into place. Let me show how it works. I'm going to stop my application here and I'm going to my custom header filter and remove that uh, I'm actually going to copy that logic, but I will remove the implementation of the ordered interface as well as the interface itself and application context. So now I'm going to navigate to my main class and use a filter registration bin. So here I'm going to implement the filter registration bin and it's a generic that takes a type of the filter. If I click on it, we'll see that it uh, takes a filter and I will implement my custom header filter and I will give it a name my custom header filter registration bin and I'm going to open a method and that will be a bin that's why I will annotate this as the uh, bin because uh, we have this Spring Boot application annotation and inside it it has Spring Boot config configuration annotation our bin will be picked up by Spring so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a class of the filter registration bin and I will pass to constructor my custom header filter, but I need to pass it from the outside uh, to make sure that um, we pass a bin that was already instantiated by Spring because we're gonna work on this filter. I will go into format this a little bit. And here on the registration bin, there is a method set order. I'll set set order minus one, and I'm going to return our registration bin. If I'm going to rerun my application and open my terminal to hit endpoint again, we can see that my, oh, I totally forgot to instantiate the headers login filter. Let me stop my application, go to go back here, annotate this as a component, uh, go back to my cast um, to uh, the main class, restart the application, send a request and inspect the filters. We can see that my custom header filter was placed indeed before the headers login filter. Also here we can use the same logic uh, where we used before. Basically dynamically place the filter depending on the various filters that we already have. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, insert the application context right here and set the order of the registration being two uh, minus one. Otherwise, I will say the order of the lowest precedence. So this is how we can use the same logic, but externalize the configuration outside of the filter. To summarize, most of the time we're going to use order annotation is the easiest and least verbose solution. If we need to have a programmatic control over ordering, we can use ordered interface. If we need to externalize our configuration, whether it's within one application or multiple ones, we can use a filter registration bin. Now, since we looked at multiple ways to change the order of the filters, let's take a look at what are the values can we set to change the order. If I go back to my application and click on this lowest precedence uh, constant, we can see that it points to a max value. On the contrary, we can see that highest precedence points to the mean value. So there are two things that come from that. First, we can say that the value type that the order accepts is an integer. The second might be a little bit confusing, but the lower the value of the integer, the closer to the top our filter is going to be placed. In here, the highest precedence meaning that it's going to be the first filter in the filter chain. And on the contrary, the lowest precedence, meaning the higher the value of the integer, the closer to the bottom our filter will be placed. So it works kind of in the opposite way. We also already looked at our example where we have our custom header filter using the minus one value compared to our headers login that uses zero value. We've seen that my custom header filter was placed before the login filter. Please let me know if you have any questions about this down in the comments. The last thing I want to talk about is what happens if two filters have exact same order value. For the headers login filter, we'll already have order set to zero. So what I'm going to do is navigate to my custom header filter and we'll set the order 
zero here too. And I'm going to remove our filter registration bin to uh, just simplify our implementation. I'm going to do over here. And if I run, so just to double check, my custom header filter is uh, order zero and headers login filter also has order zero. So let me restart that and send a request and inspect my filter chain. We can see that application didn't break. And we can also see that for some reason, my custom header filter was placed after headers login filter. So how did the spring decide to put one filter in front of the other. You may find posts on various forums or Stack Overflow which tell that if multiple filters have same order value, they will be placed in the order they were instantiated. Well, other posts say that it's not true. Regardless which one is correct, uh, there are multiple issues with both. First, the order of instantiation is a fragile thing. And the second, if there is some ordering rule, it may change from one web container version to another. In other words, if both filters have same order value, we cannot guarantee the sequence of those in a filter chain. It's our job as developers to make sure that the order values were set exact same way as we're expecting them to be. That will conclude my video and I'll see you in the next one.